Hello and welcome to another My Little Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Bree. I'm here with my mother, Shelly. Hello. My father, Gary. Hello. My husband, Jared. Hi. And my brother, Bryson. Hello. Today, we're going to be chit-chatting to you about the most recent weekly peak, which was on the well drilling rig. Super exciting. Got a name this week. But before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsor, the My Little Homestead t-shirt shop. If you'd like to get a t-shirt, sweatshirt, handbag, or many numerous products that we offer in-store, Fun designs, all kinds of fun stuff. The link will be down there in the description. Right now, Mom is wearing the new sunflower design that we've got going on, which is super exciting. A little bee on it. And Dad has got his Skitter Dunn shirt going. Yeah, well, I do have Janet Diaz, as mentioned here, that I noticed since your mom, Shelly, has been gone that your houseplant sitting on the table in front of you is <laughs> dying. <laughs> I'm sure she will forgive y'all. However, it might be a good time to make some leaves out of butyl clay and paint it green. Whoa! <laughs> I love it. She's like, it's dying, but here's what you can do. I love it. I love it, Janet. I actually uh, did water great. it. But I'm yeah. sure it missed a couple of weeks because I think mom and dad, you guys did a podcast you know, while yeah, you were up there. So we weren't in here. And if we're too not true. in here, oh, this I don't, is, know, I don't remember. Out of sight, and out of mind. This is just a sign of how much we need mom. <laughs> exactly. You realize these we plants are the hardest things to kill. If you kill a pothos plant, you're just not meant to be a gardener. Yeah, because yeah. those things you, you are not meant to be a gardener. If you can keep a pothos alive, yeah. <laughs> that's the first stage in your gardening experience. And you so, will see it because you'll see it like back. this. It looks bad. But next week... Be back here, and you'll see this thing just perk up. Yeah. It doesn't take much to bring them back. So we're gonna I'm give it so much water. You know there's gonna be a fountain in the middle of it squirting <laughs> up. So you know. it's gonna die from too much. Yeah. <laughs> <in a second. laughs> Jeff uh, Thorpe says here. I suspect it's always been a manual transmission, especially for its age. Former owner most likely swapped the steering column for a new one from an automatic. What do you think? Is that a possibility? Hey, you know, it's it is possible. Um, uh, but I believe when I was researching, there's a there's a plate on there that you can pop open on the uh, the little glove box, and it actually has on there what it was. And I believe on that plate it says hydromatic transmission, which was meant to be an automatic transmission. Did they make uh, a hydromatic one yes. with three on the tree? Kind of an idea. I don't know. I do know that the hydromatic they had in there is, I guess, good for its timing. Yeah. That it was an automatic. I mean, but then they but, would have has, had to have installed the clutch system too. So yeah, this, there was also there's that. And the other thing is with the truck is there's two transmissions, so to speak. The one there's actually one in the back that you can shift, and that one's automatically shifted with a motor. And so I suspect that tied into the automatic transmission in the front. Um, I have yet to figure out where that button exists on the thing, <laughs> if it's even wired up. I have no idea. So I was going to, that was something eventually I would research when when I have to drive that rig further than five feet off the property. There you go. And I figure <laughs> I'd look into it. Well, speaking of buttons, John B. says here, just figure out the drill rig controls. Note how many operations the drill rig does. For example, one is boom up, <laughs> two is boom down, three is boom extended, four is retract, drill down and six is drill up thank you for that comment that, uh, that, that was a good that was great comment you never know helpful My i know I, you could probably figure it out but if something is it, jams is it like or that something thing when, you know you can get a gear flung out so at you, you. So yeah. i don't know, you know? it's kind of like that thing that if you're in drive don't put it in reverse yeah there's <laughs> these, these little things that yeah. you don't really know and what happens if i put it in gear something decides to move and it goes the other way yeah. over tightens a cable snaps something comes whipping back you, you don't know oh, so it's just things have to be i think looked over carefully and little, and looked yeah. at you know it's it's not in this day and age where we have a million safety features it's back in the 50s where <laughs> Safety was optional, and so you know you have to think about these things. Wait, wait, we operate so. on that sometimes. Safety is optional, so. so you know, it's merely a suggestion. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion. It was, it was cool though. I think I think for the majority of the the buttons and knobs, I think we could probably do that with though. Um, yeah, just yeah. test. Is that you know, the ideas? Is just kind of yeah, test them and out. And most or? likely things will move slowly, so you'll be able to say, "Hey, look, that cable looks like it's stretching. Let's go the other way." You yeah. know, so we probably should you know what was nice is okay, but you know what was nice is that when you started it up. Nothing was actually engaged. Yeah. So yeah, that was an important there. I did do some research ahead of time a little bit on the clutch that's in front of that engine um, that actually engages the rest of it. Uh, that it didn't really show much in the video, and I just assumed that that clutch was disengaged because it was loose. Um, and that the assumption was right, apparently. Good. So. <laughs> hey. All right. Round yeah. one to guess. Yes. Good job. <laughs> 
Chaos Plan UI asks here, everyone says paint it. I say, leave that amazing patina. Every chip and ding has a story. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. What do you think you're going to do? You know, like that. <laughs> I really love the patina, too. I've, I've looked at the truck, and it just looks really good. I think it was attempted to be painted at some point because the front of it, you can see sand marks, and I feel like they sanded it, and they were going to paint it, and then they never sanded it, so it just rusted. Um, but I, I don't know. I just I like all the history behind all that. And I, I do think a clear coat, especially a matte clear coat, which has been a lot suggested as well, I think I might do something like that to just retain what's there. Yeah, and, but there's that showroom and restoration. Not, you know, <laughs> there is. And I mean, you could really go uh, forever restoring everything to each detail. Um, but the thing is... I would probably have to find an automatic transmission for the thing to really get it perfect. Well, and it we're not talking about the inside. Well. We're talking about the outside. So, I mean, just saying. I don't think I'm going for a full perfect restore. I think it just wants Especially since you want to actually use the thing. Yeah. That's another thing, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you put an automatic transmission in there, there might be a reason why they pulled it out. You know, the rig is pretty heavy. And I so, love how you're so focused on what's know? the inside, and we're all over here going, this is the outside. We were wondering <laughs> yeah. about the outside. Oh, because we go, it's pretty. It's should it look pretty or should what, does it look pretty enough? That's what we're asking. <laughs> what, what no ran? transmission involved in the idea. The transmission. Just Who's going to look what, at that anyway? Here's the thing yeah, that was running it's through. <laughs> <laughs> well, my thought was restoring it versus just re- keeping it. Oh, yeah. If you were going to restore it to the stock, <laughs> you would put everything original. Oh, you tear it down to the frame yeah. as much as you start could. over. Well, yeah. yeah, you're right. It's it's meant to be used. That's, so. that's what I was saying. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I got you. But thank you for the comment. That was good. Very I nice. think that's mm-hmm. exactly what we're going to do. So, so you had uh, you had some comments about the naming? Oh, yes. Because this is a, the, an awesome thing happened. We've been waiting for... A, ages. I have a... Yeah, ages. ages. That's good because okay. I was going to try to put an actual time on I don't know how long it's been. So, so there was actually only one person commented uh tuck for the name and that was deb and i just want to thank her again that's the name we ended up going tuck, with because baby. it was just it was so perfect a yeah. comment by karen long live tuck the truck may he never get stuck just time on the back of it you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i thought that comment was a good way of explaining the name tuck a little bit more <laughs> yeah. but, and tuck that was the truck you know Speaking originally of that kind of naming convention here uh gala's uh, great danes and mains commented here said so satisfying to see you moving forward on big red oh can hardly wait to see it drill okay fine i'll go with tuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right. a classic. brian codwell here after all your cleaning use dawn soap really works well on grease and remember they use it on ducks in oil spills so when they had an oil spills it protected ducks right Yes. <laughs> you know, that's really cool. I think that's like the main soap we use inside. Yeah. And you know what? I was thinking about that too. Um, thank you so much for commenting about that because that um, pressure washer we have actually has a soap <gasps> thing on it. <gasps> so we could probably just put Dawn soap right in there and just clean nice. grease off. I, yeah. It's yeah. going to be valuable to know. There's a lot of uh, grease on that. <laughs> yeah. I got this from Facebook. Wendy Dixon uh, mentioned that there was a great website. Uh, to go to to take a look at these cabletoolman.com and that's going to lead to yeah thank you so much for that because that was just like that that site is almost invaluable i actually contacted him and he actually has a manual for the 71 speed star rigs um and that book is probably going to be absolutely invaluable when it comes to fixing this thing knowing what the controls do especially and a bunch of other things and so i'm, I'm really excited about that thank you so much for that and the mm-hmm. same guy does schooling mm-hmm. for like on these types of percussion drills. It was more on the the I forget what they call it like Perseus or per- a different one, but Perseus close. It's or pretty close this, to this one, right? Twenty two W, which is like pretty close. It's a yeah. very popular rig. It's very similar to this one too, mm-hmm. uh, from what I understand. Uh, and he offers training courses for that. And so now I'm like. Oh well, gosh, I could go get like training. It's only like a week long. Just go there, learn how this thing operates, and that'll probably increase my success rate in getting a well done. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Hey, I see a yeah, road trip in our future. Uh, Wyoming. So, let's, let's do it. Do it. I mean, it was the two things that I was missing with the whole project, yeah, and so. they were there. So, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. One last comment here uh, by L. Thomas says here, oh, "Where is your mom and dad?" Right yeah. here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I don't know what you We're guys are having. We're going to let you guys know a little bit more about where we've been um, in a week or so. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty excited. That's going to be a lot of fun, that episode, for sure. Yeah, well. 
awesome, awesome. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to comment and help us out with this with this well drilling rig. Your um, just infinite knowledge of older machines and suggestions on how to get this thing back on its yes. feet has just been unbelievably helpful for Bryson. So thank you so much Invaluable. for the resources and everything else that you've you've shared with us. We really appreciate you taking the time to do that. We look forward to sharing with you next Friday. We're going to be doing that um, little highlights video. Actually, it'd be more than the highlights, but video of mom and dad's trip. So we're pretty excited about that too. That'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much too for, to our uh, Patreon supporters for your financial support. Really appreciate you. Uh, if you'd like to give a buck or two a month, the link will be down there in the description if you're interested in that. Thank you so much for being a part of the conversation being a part of our family. We look forward to, to sharing with you another week of fun My Little Homestead life. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.